Oh, are we rolling? I'm sorry, I'll be with you in a minute. Alright, kids, this is the first review I've done in a while, so here's what I'm going to need you to do. While I go in that room and shoot a review and just talk, I want you to make whimpering noises and you to just generally get in the way. Got it? Alright, and break! Lucifer Rising is the last in a series of movies from Anger called The Magic Lantern Cycle, I believe. And it was the last movie he would work on for several decades. The film took about 15 years to make, and the cast and crew kept changing over time, but with a movie like this where there doesn't seem to be a particular time or place, it doesn't really matter. You can kind of get away with it. As far as narrative goes for the movie, there's a loose one, if at all. There's not really any dialogue, although there are a few odd moments where we see a character talking, but we don't hear anything. So what do we get? Well, we get a lot of occult imagery, ancient Egyptian imagery. And come to think of it, some of the music sounds like it would fit in well with Pink Floyd Live at Pompeii. Let's talk about the music. Okay. So first of all, there was a complete soundtrack composed by Jimmy Page of Led Zeppelin that ended up being rejected. Yes. There was a moment in time where you weren't constantly being berated by Led Zeppelin's music. Led Zeppelin! There's no other music other than this! So, who did make the music? Well, a guy named Bobby Buscelli. I'm not even gonna try. Who is he? Well, <laughs> it's the damnedest thing. Turns out he was in the Manson family. So, uh, this would be the first and last to date, movie, soundtrack, recorded, and mixed in prison. The movie is even more rock and roll with its ties to the Rolling Stones. You'll notice that Alan Klein has a credit on this movie. He also dipped his toe in experimental film with 1969's El Topo. And also Mick Jagger's girlfriend at the time and a popular singer, Marianne Faithful is in the movie, which... Hey. Now, it's kind of hard to give a movie like this the same sort of review you would a usual narrative movie, because this is obviously not intended for general audiences. I'm not sure how wide a release this ever got, but it's definitely what we would call a cult film. Um, yeah. So basically, it's a little goofy, it's a little dated, you know what I mean? You really can't take it too seriously, certainly not as seriously as uh, Kenneth Anger must have been taking it since he worked on this shit for 15 years. But, you know, it's, it's an experimental film. It's almost meant to be a backdrop. It's pretty cool when it's on. Looking back on it, I guess I kind of liked it. Uh, I wish I knew more of what was going on in the story, but... I guess we'll never know, it's left up to our own imaginations, which is the biggest nightmare of all. Along with the movie, like, say, Begotten, it's, uh, very uncompromising, but really kind of best suited for being in the background and not being paid attention to for the entirety of the movie. Or even better, used in fan-made videos of Doom and stoner metal bands. I mean, every director aspires to be that, don't they? It's a movie. Well, that's about all I can say about this film. But uh, thanks for watching. And uh, I'll see you in hell! <laughs> Stay sexy. So now let's get